The Titans have won three in a row, so on this edition of Titans All Access, we go beneath the surface to see how the Titans interception leaders made the Colts pay last Sunday. Titans fans were out in force in Indianapolis. See how the Tennessee faithful show off their two-tone blue in the Hoosier State. The Nissan Insider is a man with a quarterback sack in five straight games. I'm talking about outside linebacker Harold Landry. And we will introduce you to all 10 of the 2019 Tennessee Titans, Mr. Football winners. Let's meet one right now. Big O, get this show started. I'm Amari Thomas. I'm a Mr. Football World winner. Titans All Access starts from now. You don't need the stats. You know that the Titans have won only once here at Lucas Oil Stadium. You know that the Colts have won 19 of the last 22 in this series. Big players make big plays. That makes our three. One, two, three. Perfect. Perfect. But today brings an opportunity to end all of that talk and more. And for the third game in a row, the Titans get it done again. He's in trouble. He's sacked! Taken down by Wesley Woodyard. 69 yards. Derek Henry. Touchdown! Touchdown! Tight Tennessee will not go quietly. Throw your hands up in the sky. That's three in a row for the Tennessee Titans. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. This is getting familiar. General Manager John Robinson is here. Congratulations on the win in Indianapolis. Thanks so much. Great work by the ball club. Outstanding work. And great to finish up there. Yeah, it's always to get a you know a, a good win on the road, especially against a division opponent. Now I've got to ask that fourth quarter blocked field goal. How in the world did that happen? Well, I mean, I think I think the guys are really starting to believe in that play. You know, we say it all the time. You never know what play is going to impact the outcome of the game. It happened for us in Kansas City. You know, and, and Sunday against Indy, Simmons and, and Austin Johnson and Daquan, they did a really good job of kind of caving that side of the line down. Kalu got up the field, created a gap for Dane to jump through, and Ty Smith did his job. You know, he was waiting in the wings there to catch it and go. You mentioned a lot of names there, but one of the great things that we're seeing from this ball club is how many names are contributing in this three-game win streak. Is that almost the most exciting part of what's happening with the Titans right now? Well, I think our guys are starting to really believe in complementary football. You know, in all three phases uh, of the game, you, you never know which which play is, is going to make a difference, whether it's Austin Johnson blocking a field goal earlier in the game, whether it's Harold Landry coming inside on a rush, uh, which forced that interception that Byard made, or, or the 40-yard dagger that Ryan threw to Khalif there to really end the game. You know, the unnoticed thing was Ferkser holding off the outside linebacker just long enough so the rush couldn't get there. It sealed the game for us. So it takes every single one on every single Sunday. Now we've got to talk about Derrick Henry. He became the fifth player in NFL history to have at least 145 rushing yards and a touchdown in three consecutive games. Why is this run game working so well? Well, it, it's about the, it starts at the line of scrimmage. It's about getting on your guy, getting movement, and finding a crease. You know, it starts with making sure the play is going to work, coming up there and checking, making sure that we're going to have enough blockers accounted for, moving guys off the ball, and then for Derek or Dion to get downhill and, and hit the crease on the front side or find that backside seam and, and make yards. And our guys are really, you know, they're really buying into that concept. Headed to Oakland this weekend, you're going to see another former Alabama running back, rookie Josh Jacobs. Why is he having such a nice year? Well, it's just like what we talked about. You know, he came from a program where you know he played with a lot of you know NFL players and against a lot of NFL players in that SEC league. They've got a massive offensive line. They try to move the line of scrimmage and, and create you know some space for him. He's got great quickness. He's got great vision and burst. He's a really tough guy to tackle. Let's talk about the Raiders' defense. What are they doing to get to the quarterback? Yeah, uh, Coach Gunther, he's done a nice job. You know, he, he came over from Cincinnati. He's an aggressive play caller. They've got a couple guys on the end of the line of scrimmage that are rookies in Farrell and Crosby who, who are long and they're hard chargers. They really get after you. And they're really physical in the back end. You know, they got speeded off the ball linebacker. And whether it's Harris or Joyner or Worley in the back end, they really make the receivers work for every yard. How do the Titans go to Oakland and get a fourth straight win, John? Well, I think it starts with the line of scrimmage. You know, we've got to win the line of scrimmage on, on both sides of the ball. We've got to come off the ball and move their line. We've got to stand up to their big guys on defense. And, and it's about making third downs offensively, keeping our offense on the field, getting into that red zone, scoring touchdowns, and defensively getting the ball back. 
getting off the field on third down, and finding those special teams plays that have really swung the pendulum in our favor. John, you took some time away from Oakland preparations on Monday to join us for the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards at Nissan Stadium. Ten young men playing high school football in the state of Tennessee named Mr. Football. Why do you think it's so valuable for the Titans to be involved promoting high school football in events like Mr. Football? Well, I mean, it, it, it's the lifeblood of our sport. You know, those players, those coaches, every player on our team or that has been on this roster dating back to the spring, the foundation for their passion and, and their success was laid in high school by a coach or, or a teammate. You know, being from this state, it's extremely important to me. I'm extremely proud that Amy, her family, and really everybody in our organization ha has bought into that and really supported you know, the growth of high school football in the state. We met Omari Thomas in our open. He's one of our Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Let's meet three more as we go to break. Austin Hill, Evangelical Christian School, linebacker, committed to Army West Point. Tim Kutras, Nolensville High School, defensive back. I'm committed to Liberty University. Cooper Boggess, I go to Peabody High School, I'm quarterback. Welcome back to Titans All Access. This is Coach Dave McGinnis. Game day color analyst for Titans Radio. Today we're going to go beneath the surface and watch two big game-changing plays on defense in the Titans' huge victory over the Indianapolis Colts. First play we've got here. It's in the third quarter. It's first and ten. The Titans originally are looking like they've got a middle of the field safety here. Now they change. The middle of the field safety comes back in the inside. Vaccaro comes back down. Kevin Byard before the snaps inserts to make it look like an eight-man front for the run. Ball is snapped, play action pass. Brissett looks to try to hit the post corner. Post corner is covered very well. Logan Ryan does a nice job facing inside out. Byard does a nice job of working underneath the tight end that's now trying to work the middle of the field. Harold Landry up top does a really nice job with his hands. Power shocks Costanzo at the top. Now he comes into what we call a natural. He knows the game is coming inside of him, so he makes a natural move to come around. Now he finds the open hole around the two-man game, accelerates to the quarterback, makes percent back up, throw off of his back foot across the middle of the field. Kevin Byer does a great job of rolling underneath the inside route. Nice interception, huge play. Titans are in scoring position, ends in a field goal in a very tightly contested ball game. The score's now Titans 24, Colts 17. The Titans show that they're in eight-man front. This is going to roll to a five-under, two-deep zone. Brissett is looking. He's looking at a middle-of-the-field closed post safety. Rashawn Evans is now the middle runner on the Tampa 2 defense. He does a really, really good technical job of running down the middle of the railroad tracks, being able to force this throw to be wide and over the top. Logan Ryan, nice job flipping his hips back inside. Elevated throw, Logan Ryan, hands catch, big time interception, big flip in the momentum of this football game. This is a big, big play, leads to a huge Titans victory in Indianapolis. Strangely enough, I didn't know who was grabbing me until I was on the ground and I was looking up and I was seeing his face. I was like, oh snap. <laughs> I'm from Houston, Texas. I didn't know much about it. I didn't grow up watching football. I grew up watching WWE SmackDown and Monday Night Raw. Started off as the Houston Oilers from Houston. Came up here, I think they went to Memphis first and came up here. So it's all that, that same little bloodline. And when I tell my friends and teachers and they found out, just like, oh yeah, we love your team now. Like, because they already loved the Houston Oilers and they just transferred over. So that just makes everybody proud and happy that I'm on this team, they can root for the Titans. Next up on Titans All Access, Tennessee fans travel to Indianapolis and show how their passion helped bring home the win. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access. We're still reveling in the glow of the win at Indianapolis a little bit. 
just enough. Enough. You know, 24 hours plus some. You know what I loved about Indianapolis was all the Titans fans who made the trip. There were tons, especially as the Colts fans started to leave. The Titans fans came down. It was magical. It was pretty great. One of the Titans fans who's been with us since day one is Vincent Love. He even organized a big party in Indianapolis. These folks certainly bleed two-tone blue. Anyone can be a fan, choose a team, and scream their heart out. But it takes loyalty, dedication, and fearlessness to venture into the heart of a storm. To stand up when you are outnumbered a thousand to one. These fans are the warriors on the ground that suffer the conditions of the battle. These fans, these fans bleed blue. Unicorns. In Nashville, a city full of transplants, it's what we call people who are actually from here. Vincent Love is just that, a day one fan. Vincent's family had a vote yes to NFL sign in their yard. Young Vincent would even ride his bike to Baptist Sports Park in Bellevue to watch training camp. Vincent's had a good run on the road. He's only seen his team lose once. That loss was in Indianapolis. So I guess you could call this a revenge story. Having a huge division game with playoff implications. The Titans began slow. They've really picked up their pace as their six and five record would indicate. What's poppin' Titans Nation? It's your boy V Love 615. It's about one o'clock national time. Got my bags packed, cars gassed up. We're heading up I-65 to Indy. Tightening up all weekend, making some noise for the boys. Bleed blue. RIP Matt Neely. Let's go. Right, so we're 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 right now. I have no idea. What's that was all about? Oh, oh, yeah, I, I think OTP he seemed to be the, fine after that. Twos. I mean, played the rest of the game and everything was okay. Boys, I made it in the enemy territory. Ready to go. I ain't scared. Tighten up all day. Buds, boys, bus in Indy, tightening up. I'm back in Indianapolis, Indiana right now, and I'm not seeing us lose again. When you're on the road, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get that, you're gonna get people chattering. It ain't nothing, like, we're gonna tighten up, we're gonna make some noise, we're gonna get in your face back. I ain't scared of nobody. On the road, you throw popcorn at me, I throw some cheers back, because we're gonna tighten up. Merry Christmas, get out of here. Today, we are women in Indy, let's go! Let everybody know that you're here. This is my city. When I come in your house, I'm making it my house. We're the boys. Tighten up. Let's go. Tannehill fires. Man is open. It's Humphreys at the five. Touchdown! Go! You're on the road sometimes. It doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're chirping. They're saying this. They're saying that. They throw popcorn at you. I'll pick it up. I'll eat it. You know why? Because we're eating W's. 24 straight points. And the Titans have come to Indianapolis and picked up a victory. This means everything to me. Like, this is my team. I'll die for this team. Like, I'll stand up for this team every day. Man, that was so much fun in Indianapolis. Good job, Vincent. Yeah. But you know what else is fun? winning Mr. Football. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, here's a couple more of the guys who were Mr. Football winners for 2019. Zeke Rankin, Alco High School, and I'm a kicker and a punter. Elijah Young, South Dole, running back. I'm committed to University of Missouri. James Moore, Stratford High School, running back. You know what Titans outside linebacker Harold Landry really likes to do, Amy? Knit? I don't know. Hit the quarterback. Oh, 
Oh. Nine sacks overall, sacks in five straight games. You know what Harold Landry doesn't like to do? What? Talk about himself. Ah. But fortunately, we convinced him to do some of that in this week's Nissan Insider. Does Harold Landry really dislike this part of the job? Talking about yourself, <laughs> the whole interview thing. Would, would you say you you dislike it? And maybe not about me personally, but no, just overall. I'm just a, uh, a low-key guy, you know, chill dude. But yeah, I definitely am more so the type of guy that, you know, he just wants to, you know, play football. But I understand, like, it's part of the game. So, you know, I just, do what I gotta do. You did the pre-draft interview with us out on the porch. You remember doing that? Yeah. And you talked about Taylor Lewan and how you'd worked out with him. But even then, you were one of the less hype guys on a pre-draft visit that I've ever been around. So mm -hmm. even with your success in the NFL, you're still the same guy, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just low-key chill. Loves to play ball and you know chill with his voice. As you get more attention though. As you continue to sack the quarterback, as you become one of those guys, you know you're going to keep getting more attention, though, right? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, but, you know, I'm probably still stay myself and just do what I got to do and just, you know, keep falling. So let me ask you this question. Who is Grayson Landry? That's my boy, my son, two years old, about to be three in June next year. He's a dog, I'm telling you. He's going to be way bigger than me, and I can't wait to see him play. If there's one thing you get excited talking about, it's your son. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, man. You see him, he's automatically smile. Like, you just can't help it. He's an awesome kid. He's been awesome ever since he came out of the womb. Why does being a dad excite you so much, even at this young age? I mean, I don't know. It's just cool, like, seeing him, like, talk and, like, you know, running around. I don't know. It's just something special, and, you know, I'm extremely blessed. You know, I got another son on the way that's due in December. I don't know, I just can't wait to, you know, like I'm excited about those moments, you know, his first touchdown or this or that, and even getting excited over like, I come home and he's saying new words and stuff like that. It's just awesome, it's an awesome feeling. Does it make it easier to separate the football part of Harold Landry's life to the home part of your life because your family gives you a different perspective. Yeah, for sure. In the season, it's hard to go home and not think about football. Like, I'm gonna be honest, football's on my mind all the time. I go home, I'm still watching film, doing this and that, and you know, they understand. Let's put it one more way. How special are the holidays with a wife and a son and another one on the way? Yeah, no, nah, I mean, it's awesome. She's a big family get together type of person. I'm a really low key dude, like I could just chill and just hang out, but she like, she wants the family, the interaction, all of that. I'm actually looking forward to Christmas because they're all coming to my house, so that'll That's be great. a great time. So have you already started all the shopping and are you the crazy dad buying everything as you prepare for, there's a big Christmas right here because he knows what's going on at this Christmas. Yeah, nah, I'll be honest, I'm more of like the, yeah, I probably got a game that week, so my wife handles like all of that. So, like I said, she's amazing. Good news for Isaiah Mack is on deck on Titans All Access. But before the good news, let's meet more of the 2019 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Kimari McGowan, Middle Tennessee Christian School, running back. Lincoln Perry, Houston High School, running back. Holden Willis, Greenback High School, wide receiver. The push towards the end of the regular season is the focus of the next Titans All Access. General Manager John Robinson gets us ready for a showdown with the Houston Texans. Our Nissan Insider features Mike Keith's visit with wide receiver Corey Davis. Coach Dave McGinnis is back with another great look beneath the surface. And the good news revolves around Titans players and their families, brightening the holiday season for those in need. All that and more on the next Titans All Access. 
Fun fact about Amy Wells, she does not like to be surprised. This is accurate. I do not like surprises. But she likes to surprise other people. I do enjoy that. And we did it together on Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, which is on Titans Radio every Tuesday night at 6 Central at 6th and Peabody in downtown Nashville. We did that when we had Isaiah Mack, the rookie defensive tackle from Chattanooga, on the show last week. Absolutely. He got a surprise phone call from Chattanooga. He did. He sure did. And uh, his reaction was pretty epic. Daryl Patterson is the man who called him a television legend in Chattanooga, and he called Isaiah to let him know he'd won a big award. Would you mind if we take a call? Uh, sir. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's a call from Chattanooga, ironically. Daryl Daryl in Chattanooga, we welcome you to Titans Thank Tonight you. with Keith Bullock. I want to congratulate Mac. We have chosen him as our Reggie White Male Athlete of the Year winner for this year. How about it, Isaiah? I ain't got no words. Uh, I was just <laughs> talking to Coach about... Uh, about great play, players that went to chat like Terrell and uh, Reggie because I, I, we get lucky. Uh, Finley is on Reggie Boulevard, so it is. Yeah, this is one of the yeah. names that you always grow up. And Coach Williams is a huge fan of the uh, of his uh, his counter move that he tries to get us to do so many times, but not everybody can be Reggie White. So it's it's an amazing honor because, uh, like you said, Chattanooga loves Reggie White. He did an amazing job for that city, uh, coming back and all them things. So, I mean, it's an honor just to even be mentioned with an award for his name. So I'm just, I'm just lost for words. If you were named the Chattanooga Athlete of the Year, that would be a good surprise. Well, I would be very surprised because I'm very unathletic. Mm. That would be a doozy. Something else you should know about Amy <laughs> Wells. We're, we're sharing She's today. sharing everything, as usual. <laughs> for Amy Wells, the oversharer, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. It's good for people to know these things. Not really. <laughs>